previously on the block, Villa Wars. Four teams ended up in two houses. Looks like I'm gonna have to throw these ones away. Everyone's got a housemate. Leaving houses three and four untouched and up for grabs. Two houses are sitting empty around the corner having no one in them. A hard fought battle of the guest bedrooms. I am not ready. Saw Sarah and Manan crash and burn. And Kat and Jeremy emerge victorious. I told them winning this week was important. And tonight, the victors claim their territory. You can now decide whether you want to stay in your house or move into any other house on the block. But dividing up the spoils of war becomes a whole new battle. Kat and Jeremy now have the ultimate privilege and the ultimate dilemma. It's a choice that could potentially win them the block. House one and two have two complete rooms. House three has size and sun, and house four is tucked away on its own street. Will they choose to stay in their original favorite house one or defect to another property? Give me something, <laughs> give me something. <laughs> We'll take house three, please. House three? Yeah. We just really, really like that house. We think it's got massive street appeal. It's a lot different to the other houses on the block. We were just quite sold on that one. OK, so you're in house three. You have moved. Spending time on site, I've started to realise that all the sun is over at three and four. The location is really, really important, and so is the sun. But it's going to be a bit hard because we're going to have to leave our completed room behind. House three probably would have been too big for us to, to renovate, to be honest. Um, and also, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure about how I feel about a corner section. So the next choice, Brooke and Mitch with a score of 13. There is houses one, two and four. Mm. You're currently in two, if you yeah. want to stay. There's some very expensive windows in house number two. <laughs> um, we'll take number four. Yeah. Someone's going to get some beautifully smooth sashes. <laughs> and that's killing me, eh? <laughs> House four, why? We think um, for the sun, uh, it's practically got all day sun in that house. That's a huge factor, and I really liked the layout of House four as well. Mm. So we want to we wanna move. I wasn't confident with House two, mm. so I'm really happy with House four. Brooke and Mitch moving to House four sort of confirms our decision as well, that they were on. The, they were thinking the same thing as us. There's still a choice to be made. Lucky you two, up. Jamie and Hayden. Let's stay, but I think. What have you got now? You've got no. one or two, and of course you've been in two, so you've done some work in there. You want to move? Why? It's like a bigger floor plan. Better way, better way down home, pick out. Please don't pick house one. It's our home. You think that that's going to work better? Our master bedroom needs to be bigger than what it is. Mm-hmm. I trust you. OK, Mark, after uh, careful consideration and deliberation with the boss, we're going to have to uh, look at inheriting uh, the best room of the week. And we'll take house number one. Please don't knock out my ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. <laughs> I'm glad we went with house one. Look at it this way, we just inherited a winning room yeah. in our first week. Yeah. We're, we're sort of the winners of week one. Yeah. We wanted that house in the first place. So that means Sarah and Manan, you go into house two. It's, it's pretty disappointing that, um, you know, that we lost out on house one because it has the biggest yard. Um, and, you know, for me that's kind of important, especially when you're quite close to the city. But the good news is, I'm going to let you take the furniture you bought from the guest rooms. Yeah, it was a big relief when he said that. There is a lot of money tied up in all that stuff, accessorising the room and all the furniture and everything, knowing that, that was, we get to retain it and keep it and use it in our house. It was the best news. So there you have it. We've had a big house swap seat. <laughs> a massive shuffle. Everyone's moving, aren't they? I'll get some keys cut. In the meantime, you guys go and get your mattresses. Off you go. Good work, guys. Yeah, yeah, well, well done. done.
After a week of playing musical houses, it seems like everyone's heading back to the block as happy chappies. That is, mostly. Houses one and two come with two already completed rooms. But will the new residents like what they see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I reckon first thing we do, babe, get rid of that ceiling. The way I see it is we're not going to have time to do that in every single room. No, so. no way. Oh, wow. Robots. Very nice. I don't know about the colour, though. Well, you don't like this colour. I thought this might be a bit of you. It's very... Um, Barbie. I haven't seen anything that crazy since the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Ooh, that's a bit harsh. Sarah and Van Ann aren't that crazy about inheriting your room either. Yeah, we gotta lose the black. We have a bit of work to do here. The paint choice was questionable. Black and white was a little bit striking. The room is quite a small room, um, and they've made it seem even smaller by painting the walls black. Yeah, and no, I will strip back all the colour and start it again. Our top two scoring teams might think they have nabbed themselves the two best houses, but they have to get their heads around the fact they'll be starting from scratch. So this is our new house. Look at those doors. They're beautiful, eh? Yeah. They left all this stuff in here for us. So lovely. Another big bay? <laughs> yeah. Well, Hopefully okay. those windows work. <laughs> yeah, because they're massive as well, but that's awesome. I don't even know. Where does it end? How to approach this Maybe space, eh? <laughs> At this point, starting a whole new house with less budget is really, really daunting and a bit overwhelming. This looks like another sleepless few nights in here, eh? <laughs> Even though there's so much work to do, I'm so happy that we've got a house for. Yeah. I think this is the pick of the bunch, and, yeah. you know, I think we can make something really special out of it. Yeah, for sure. And there's two houses that have got two rooms practically finished, and we've got sort of to, well, we've got no rooms, we've got nothing that started. And so we have this week's two top teams fighting for supremacy in two untouched houses. With Kat and Jeremy, they're a force to be reckoned with, you know, they've got great taste. I think we can definitely match it, but in a different way. We have our own style. Yeah, bring it on. I like your fighting spirit. Now it's just claiming the spoils of war that they have to worry about. Do you think it's going to fit out the door? Yeah, I'm an expert at making big things fit in small places, babe. Not going to make it? No. Son of a Do you still think that you're good at putting big things in small places? Departees have the right to take unfixed items with them. How am I actually going to do that? And of course, arrivals can tear anything down they don't like. Not even a scratch. During the process, a few desirable objects seem to have captured Jamie's attention. Hey Dan mate, we're moving house at the moment and we've got to take everything with us, so I'm moving all the furniture out at the moment. The lights. We're taking them. No. Are you not? Are you, you taking your, are you taking your light? No. I'm leaving them in there. Yeah, it's all part of our um, our whole look. It's part of our um, aesthetic. You sneaky bugger. Hey Dan. Yeah. Do you want these curtains or not? If you want them. If you're not gonna use them, I'd like the lining fabric back, because we're gonna we're our that's quite a big thing. So it's, it's up to you. If you're not going to use them anyway, then we'll take them back. But if yeah, you we were gonna want to use them somewhere, them. then that's cool too. I'm just going to keep them in this room. Yeah, that's fine too, girl. But Jamie has her eye on an even bigger prize. The Rhombus Day Bed. Yeah, we'd like to take um, our day bed with us from the last house. We've talked to Miss Lolo and um, Dean about it, um, who, who made it and they think they could make some modifications and possibly integrate it into our house. Mm. It's probably worth like five. Five grand? Yep. What's worth five grand? That. That. Because we've got a, like a company to custom build Yeah. It's cool though, eh? I really love the day bed. I haven't seen uh, many of them before, so it would make that room just stand out and pop. So it's time for Jamie and Hayden to take their day bed dispute to the block's equivalent of the UN. Hey Peter mate. Greetings. Got some nice little questions for you. Excellent. So um, we've been told that we're allowed to take all of our furniture to our new rooms. I guess so. Yeah. What I'm curious about is if something's affixed to the wall it's not really an item of furniture, it's a part of the room. What might it be that you're discussing? Maybe a day bed in house one. Yes. So it's completely affixed to the wall. They can take the cushion. Do you like the day bed? I love the day bed. <laughs> well, that's not a point. If I had to judge it, let's say, or determine, you'd go, if it was 
not fixed, there would be carpet under it. But I'm guessing that it went in and the carpet goes up to it, and the skirting got nailed to it afterwards. So yes, while it was made off-site and added in, it's now integral to the room. So you might want to tell Jeremy and Kat that they can't take... We're going to break their heart. Yep. I want that daybed, and I'm going to make sure we get it. Something tells me this daybed dispute is about to escalate. Sunday afternoon on the block, and Jamie's steely determination to take possession of that daybed is about to come to a head. Hey, Kat, we've got something to tell you. What? Incoming. Can we tell me at a different time? When I get oh, 100 kgs you're... of my hey, how about... we'll help you. I'll hold that for you. We'll help you. <laughs> you right? Oh, oh that's a um, cushion. Yeah. yeah. That's Real the cushion. One. Yeah. And by the sounds of it, that might be all that's leaving that room. Just what? the cushion. Well, the day bed's fitted, isn't it? But it was made off site, it was furniture that we brought in. But it's no longer furniture because the carpet doesn't go underneath it. It's affixed to the wall. And the skirtings are nailed to it, and the skirtings are nailed to the house. I think it comes down to money. Yeah. Go away, work out a price. Do you guys want to know how much it costs us? And we can show you the price. Yeah. Costs us nearly three grand. What are you willing to pay for it, James? Because you're the accountant. I'll pay 1500 All right, we'll come, we'll come meet up with you guys in a minute. We'll have a little chit-chat. OK, sounds Sweet. good. Thanks, guys. While House 1 and 3 are all talk over the David dispute, in House 4, Brooke and Mitch demonstrate that actions speak louder than words, especially when you're two rooms behind. Super damn. How's that? And when there's a mountain of work for you and your tradies to get through, sweep them up with a little Peter Pit. Right which is uh, doing all the work for us. Oh, come on, boys. Who's paying your wages, eh? Looking cracking, right? <laughs> Over in House One, the new occupants are taking time to enjoy the craftsmanship and the hard work that went into what was Sarah and Manan's lovingly restored ceiling. And now... They're tearing it down. All right, loving your work, Marty. So Where'd the mate. ceiling go? You guys haven't spent that long on that ceiling, though, eh? Nah, just half a week. Half a week? Yeah. Oh, it only took us 30 no minutes to tear it down. <laughs> I can't believe they did that. Fair enough, it's your loss. But Sarah and Manan are planning some deconstruction of their own. All right, come on in. Hang on a second. New builders? This is a block first. Something tells me there's more to this story than just a casual change of the guard. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So we've got new builders, um, and they're going to be sticking with us for the duration of the block, so we're really excited. Um, Chris and Dale, they seem like cool guys. They've done some villa restorations before, so that's always good that they have a, you know, a bit of an insight of how yeah. things should look. Brook and Mitch worked on this room, and they hated the skirting and all the, mod you know, all the villa features. It is a villa and we want to restore some of the character even if everything we put in it ends up being really modern. We're definitely changing these, correct? We're changing to yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. the old... Yeah. It's a shame because these are brand new windows that were installed last week. Yeah. So that's right. Sarah and Manan have decided to rip out the brand new window sills that Brooke and Mitch paid so much for. I don't actually think there can be any bitterness between the contestants and um, changing up the rooms and things because we've all got different styles. Yep, no bitterness here. Just watch how empty of bitter Brooke and Mitch are as they come to collect their belongings. I hope you feel bad. <laughs> Just so you know, they were four thousand five hundred dollar windows, so be careful of them. Bargain. Yep. Yeah. No bitterness there whatsoever. Um, so what we're doing in that room, we're yeah. probably going to do in this room. Yes. Which gives us a few issues up there with that wardrobe door. No criticism about the wardrobe. Yes, that's a bit of a sore spot for Brooke and Mitch after last week's comments. Hey, why is this mismatch, can I ask? Because it was a bit of a dick mode. It was a bit of a dick yeah. mode. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I knew that was going to be annoying. Oh. You're screaming to be punched in the face. I think we might have to take it out. <laughs> might take the top one out, maybe. Oh, oh, oh that storage. Having that storage. It is, eh? Yeah, that storage is really important. 
our room from last week's in their hands now. I mean, if they want to start ripping it and changing stuff, then by all means, go for it and do it. Discussions between House 1 and 3 are also getting tense, with the day bed dispute about to come to a head. Ultimately, if you pay for it, it comes out of this week's budget, you know. Knocky, knocky, knock. Hello there. Hey, How's it going? Hello, neighbours. <laughs> What's up? So, we've thought about your offer. Yeah. And we're going to hit that with 1800 and it's yours. Nope. My final offer is now 1300 because we've just seen that it's been taken off the wall. It's going to cost us more to get it put back up. It's just two screws. Two we'll put it back for 1800 Yeah, I'll, I'll fix it back there for you. If you can put it back, I'll do 1400 and that's it. 17 that's our final offer. No. Otherwise, we can't offer you any less. Because we, we spent $3,000 on it. We can't go any higher than 1500 We could do 1600 and you could do two 800s or something. I'd be happy with that. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Okay, this is a deal. Fix it back to the wall, 1600 over two payments. Yeah. This week and next week. Yeah. All right. Okay. Shake on it. <laughs> Get in there. Good deal, guys. Well done. Hey. You've got your... It was a little bit touch and go for a minute there. Um, yeah, we're kind of the, the battle of the negotiations began, but yeah, I think we all reached a pretty happy agreement for both teams. The teams now need to refocus on the week ahead. But are they ready to take on the judges' advice? And was there any room for improvement in Kat and Jeremy's winning first room? Yeah, this is really exciting. I'm excited. I don't know who these people are. Overall, guys, I thought a really good look. Very happy. But again, really look out for those storage and the soft furnishings. See if you can actually look at softening the room a bit more with some more fabric. Going forward into the other bedrooms, a little bit more of the same, but just refine it sort of a little bit better. And um, carpet choice, you've created a very soft room, so your carpet needs to reflect that. So they weren't that down with the carpet? They that? weren't that down with the carpet. They didn't like our ribs look. Were Jamie and Hayden on the right track with their more playful approach? Well, this would be interesting. Hi, guys. Look, I want to congratulate you on the effort that you've put into this room and the thought that you've put into it for making it a little bit different from um, what we were probably expecting. The feature wall that you've done with the timber is just such a surprise, and, and uh, the whole room has got like a sense of fun with it. As a guest room, I think I would be very pleased to have a little bit of fun staying in this room. What I love is that we're going to be able to continue that uniqueness through each of our spaces. Yeah. And um, they're really embracing that, so it'll give us a real point of difference. And how can Sarah and Banan move on from that room? Let's just check it out. Guys, I think it's great to be adventurous with colour, but maybe not this <laughs> adventurous. <laughs> Just think about the colour palette because when you come into a bedroom you want it to be restful. So with your orange and your, and your lavender, and it's such a strong lavender, the orange might be just a little bit too much. So overall I don't think a, a fantastic job, but I think definitely try harder for next week. The, everything they pointed out was completely fair. Um, we just dropped the ball, didn't have enough time and didn't think about it enough. And how do Brooke and Mitch lift their game now they have a fresh start in House 4? Let's do this. Overall, guys, I thought, really nice job. I think you've really listened to the brief. You've understood going with that whole modern feel, which I think is which is good. We can see the detail of all the modernity, but we don't feel like you've really got it on the luxury side of things. But, you know, you've done really well getting the ceiling height in, but I would have liked to have seen just a few more features, putting the traditional Scotia, the traditional skirting boards, that type of thing back into it. I think what the judges have said to us is really helpful um, about keeping a, a bit of the heritage features. Now that I look at it, I think that's definitely the way to go. Funny. That's what Sarah and Banan think too about your old room. It's been a tense day on the block, but it's seen our team settled finally in their new houses and no longer cramping each other's creative expression. That's beautiful. I wish my look, bird was that big. You look like a caveman. <laughs> what happened today? You got the W. I got the W. Our first big win on the block. This is our new home. We've got upstairs. This whole area is like the homeowner's haven. It's super stoked to be here. And this house has got some cool features. Mm. And hopefully features that the buyers want. It's got some secrets hiding in these walls. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. 
I said at the very beginning House 4 had a hidden secret. And in a few weeks' time, Brooke and Mitch will find out what that is. You have a distinct advantage, as you're very, very fortunate oh, yeah. enough to have... Oh. Are we the only ones? Yes, we're the only ones. <laughs> the mysteries of House 4 deepen, but you'll just have to wait and see how this one plays out. The sun is up on a new week and a new room on the block. And our teams are about to find out what's in store for them over the next six days. Morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Well, congratulations from me because you've survived your first week on the block. The bad news is you two teams are now a full room behind. Those guest rooms have to be completed within the nine weeks. And I would suggest you do that sooner rather than later. Right, who wants to find out what room they're doing this week? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. bring it on. It is going to be a kid's bedroom. Yes! <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I like kids' bedrooms. I'm amped for it because I'm a big kid. Yes! We don't have any kids ourselves, but Kat here is an early childhood teacher, so it's right up her alley. I know what they want. Now, in past years, teams have tried to play it safe with a kid's bedroom. But if you look at previous winners of the Block NZ, they've always been the teams with the most innovative and bold designs. So neutral colours and a few toys thrown in the corner will not cut the mustard this week. This needs to be a room that an eight-year-old would walk into and be blown away by. They want something that is fun and stimulating. So for the team with the most inspiring kids' bedroom, they will find their online bank balances topped up to the value of $5,000 from a mates at A&P. And you're gonna need that money because you're all over budget. To completely renovate your house, you've got 80K cash, as well as a sponsor budget, by my reckoning. That's an average of 8K a room, but you've all overspent massively. By my estimates, Kat and Jeremy, you've overspent by $2,691. Our overspending was strategic. We knew there was a lot at stake, so we just had to win that room. Sarah and Manan, $2,466. It was all in the builders. I mean, we were given a budget of eight grand, and we spent over five of that on builders. So, you know, it was expected. Yes, builders, plural. A team of five is bound to blow your budget, which explains why they've downscaled to just two. But if you ask me, even two may be too many. I actually told a bit of a lie, because Jamie and Hayden, you're actually under budget. Yay. We actually haven't paid our electrician bill yet, so that would put us around about $2,000 over budget, the same as the others. <laughs> hit, hit us! <laughs> hit us! You've been sniggering since the start. Yeah. I started on money. That's huge, we know. 7625 oh. that's, that's sweet. I actually expected that's it good. to be more. We did have major cost with our windows, and yeah, now that's not even our house. <laughs> Brooke and Mitch had a really tough room. Um, the structure was just really not there, which is a little bit worrying, seeing as that's our, our house, house now. now. <laughs> Rain in the spending, OK? Well, none of you will finish. But for now, start planning those kids' bedrooms, start channeling that inner child, OK? Good luck. Jeez. <laughs> I think we just had the worst possible first week, so it can only go up from here. It's time to get back to the block and get inspired. But it's easier said than done. Um, I don't know. 
Yeah, I'm struggling a bit with the brief this week. You know, it's been a long time since I was eight, and um, I think eight-year-olds in this modern day and age sort of just want a tablet and a, and a phone, you know, to play on. It's going to be a tough week, I think. While Mitch struggles to recover the eight-year-old version of himself, Sarah and Manan are putting their block apocalypse behind them and embracing a fresh start. This is our room. <laughs> So in our room, we're going to keep the feature wall that was there from uh, Hayden and Jamie's guest bedroom. But we will be spicing it up with a loft bed that's going to be suspended into that wall. Um, and under that, we're going to have a study space for a little boy and also um, some storage area, shelving and um, place to put his clothes. We'd like to keep the larger architraves. They're a little bit bigger than our previous room. Um, and we'd also like to up the size of our skirting boards. Our builders are amazing. Uh, Chris and Dale are both builders and carpenters, and that's going to be a bit of an advantage for us, I think. I will use your work and we'll build it. I I'm excited about this week. I was most excited about the kids' week coming into it. Speaking of fun, it looks like Jamie and Hayden are taking the sense of fun that the judges mentioned and running with it. I think the rock climbing wall will be um, like a main feature. Yeah. I can guarantee okay. that no one else is going to do it. Yeah. And they're really running with it. The slide, the rock climbing wall will just make the room go boom. Yeah. We've got magnetic wallpaper. Yeah. And they can put all their stuff on it. It's got a big, um, it's got a giraffe on it. Yeah. So it's quite cool. I reckon it'll look cool having Tetris blocks. If I was a kid, I would love this room. I'm an adult and I still love this room. <laughs> Could there be such a thing as too much fun? Uh, as you walk in on the left, you're going to find a massive, massive bunk bed. It's going to have a ladder access up the left-hand side and a slide to get down on the far right-hand side. Underneath, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll find a custom-made desk, and this is all going to be lit up by some specialised LED lighting strips, which go the length of the platform. It looks like we have the battle of the bunks on our hands in houses one and two, where the advantage of near-complete rooms allows a little creativity. Over in their as yet untouched house, Kat and Jeremy are struggling with a very basic question. Where is the kids' bedroom? We just cannot even find where this kids' room is supposed to go. There's just bathrooms and weird spots and walls and weird spots. It's really, really confusing. We don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> so we're thinking that this is probably the kids' bedroom. What do you reckon? This area, yeah. Corner of the house, away from, you know, all your living, away from the master bed, away from the guest room. Yeah, get a sledge out, eh? <laughs> we know that we've got a lot of work to do. This is a much bigger job than um, we had last week in house one. Uh, we're now in house three with the high ceilings, um, more walls that we've got to demo. Just basically everything in there's got to come out. Nothing stays. There may be twice as much work to do this week, but Kat is keen to remind Jeremy why she thinks her choice of House 3 is a good one. Jeremiah! Oh, Katie. I've got you some yummy pitta pit for lunch. I need this, eh? I was talking to the builder, and they said the sun in here just, like, pours in, like, it's so sunny and warm. And... If you go upstairs from the master bedroom, we're the only house that has a view of the sky tower. Have you seen it yet? Let's have a look. Check it. Check it. Wow, yes, that's awesome, eh? So good. I'm starting to agree with you on the fact that I think this is the best house on the block, eh? Ah, oh, well, it's nice to see that, for the moment, all thoughts are dwindling budgets and a mountain of work can be put to one side. It's Monday afternoon on the block, and Shelley's about to provide the teams with a chance to improve their skills, and most importantly, their financial position. Teams, hello. Hi. Hi. This week, I have found the ultimate expert in all things children. In fact, I've found eight of them. Oh. <laughs> Say hello to the kids. I'm an early childhood teacher. I haven't seen little kids for ages. I miss them. These guys are from Mount Albert Primary School, which is just down the road. And you may notice they're holding some plans. Mm. They've been busy creating four amazing playhouses that you guys are going to bring to life. 
I play in a few playhouses during my working week. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm quite excited to see the plans and see what, what they've got for us. The winners of this Child's Play Challenge get to take home 10 grand in plumbing labour from our mates at Laser Plumbing. $10,000 from Laser Plumbing would be awesome, absolutely awesome. And the good news does not stop there because on the Block NZ we love giving back. So the team at Bailey's are going to auction off your finished playhouses and 100% of the proceeds go to their new charity, Make-A-Wish New Zealand. Oh, awesome. We've created some basic framework for you and some building supplies over here, but the rest is up to you. Anything you find in the warehouse can be used. You have three hours and zero dollars. And I'm hoping everyone's improved a bit after last week's challenge. Can't get it off, Mitch. I hope there's more tool knowledge, more focus, more teamwork and more planning. And let's hope you all finish on time. I reckon we get started. I'm excited to build a playhouse. It's even better that the plans are drawn up for us already so we don't have to think too hard about that. Yeah. We'll just please our clients and hopefully they like what we do. Hi. I'm giving the teams 10 minutes to consult with their mini designers before they begin building their playhouses. Oh, a castle here. Can you explain this to us so we know exactly how you want it? This is a climbing wall. It's awesome. There's some pretty ambitious ideas, which are going to be quite hard to do, I think, with this conceit that we've got. So what have we got here, boys? So it's an alien spaceship playhouse. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I like that. We've got, like, a bed in case you get tired. Oh, that's a good idea, because I get tired quite often, eh? <laughs> I'm liking this. That this is delicious. beautiful, yeah. It's not made from candies. It's not made oh, awesome. Yeah, that's good, eh, because we don't have any candy on hand. <laughs> so it yep. looks like a gingerbread house? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Oh. Wow, it's a beautiful drawing. I'm not sure if it's achievable in three hours. No, no, if you like play hide and seek, you get to hide in there. Oh. And that's like the little um, it's a, a smile statue on there. So is it kind of just like a hide and seek kind of house with lots of little spaces in it, is that right? Yeah. Oh, cool. We want you to win. We want oh, to win. With a plan like this, guys, I don't see how we could lose. <laughs> it's too easy. Uh, you guys have done an awesome job. Yeah, real good. OK, your ten minutes is up. And that means the challenge starts now. Yeah, so that's 50 mil. We like to plan out exactly what we're doing and make sure that we don't do a rush job. That's the front? Yeah. Because it's shorter. OK, that makes sense. OK, babe, so the plan at this stage is to configure a brace so that we can put it on stilts. Uh -huh. I want you to figure out this puzzle. OK, so obviously we've got the two end walls there. This piece of timber here goes up in the middle for your ceiling, and your roof. <coughs> yep. The secret weapon this week is me. No, actually, it's our stilts, and no one else is doing this, and uh, I think it will give us a really big point of difference. So we need it. Sarah's showing she's made some progress with the power tools since last week. I should check before I chop it that these are the same. I didn't realise that these pieces would be different. But not with the planning. So right now I'm feeling pretty annoyed. I've just gone and cut the door out of the wrong piece, so we're just going to have to patch it up and make it work. 1600. Mitch taking the lead as usual. I think it's got a 400 overhang. I'm trying to help Mitch, but I feel like I'm not really contributing that much. But there's no idle observing for super competitive Jamie. Oh, I pick up the big round tin to draw a circle out and slice open both my fingers. Oh, you'll be right. It's just a minor flesh wound. She'll be back. Yeah. But Jamie's not the only one beating herself up. You all right? Yeah. I was chopping through, trying to chop my door out. And for some reason, I just leant on the bit that I was cutting out instead of putting my hand to the side, and I just went straight through it. Are you OK? I did, yeah. You are right. Aside from injuring themselves, at the halfway mark, the teams have managed to complete their framework and put up walls. Solid. We don't need another one. That's solid as. 
It's almost time for the roof shout. Something a bit different, rather than applying paint, where there's all these samples, so why not use them? Do something cool with them? Just keep chipping away at them. Cool. That'll be real cool. The kids will love it. Yeah. It is a bit of a risk doing your roof tiles because it is quite time consuming, but I think we're going to smash through it. to take that way. Yeah, got it. As Brick and Mitch attach their roof, all the teams <laughs> might look close. A lot more to do. But the brief said stimulating. Time for some colour and to add the bells and whistles. We've only just put on the roof. I'm honestly thinking we're not going to finish. I'm painting like my life depends on it. The drawbridge is obviously a massive feature. It's a castle, so you need the drawbridge. With half an hour to go, the teams need to pick up the pace. I'm um, going to get flag on front. Got to get our door handle on. We're running low on paint, so hopefully I can get this all done. Otherwise, I look a bit stupid. We're half finished. Jeremy may be running out of paint, but Hayden's suddenly running out of patience. I put them there. Screw them there. Paint jams. Hayden's a little bit frustrated and I get a little bit of the whiplash for it. There's nothing else to do. Well, do whatever you want. With just over 15 minutes left, the teams are busy decorating and attaching doors. Sarah is taking a slightly unusual approach. So I've never attached a hinge before, but um, in the time frame we've got left, hot glue seems like an appropriate medium for the out oh, oh, it's hot. Okay, I can guarantee you that hot glue is hot. Sarah did also making those doors. I definitely could not have. <laughs> Freestyle jigsaw. Jerry is in the house putting a swing up because it is quite a big feature of the girl's design. Ten second countdown. Ten. Where's the gun? Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And tools down. Yes! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Hold on, babe. Hold on. Get it, The roof is on and nothing's falling off, so I'm stoked. I think we did just as good a job as any other team. <laughs> <laughs> They've finished all four playhouses. But which one will the smallest judge in the Block NZ history like the most? With three hours and a set of detailed plans to work from, our block troops have put in their best effort to construct the ultimate playhouse. And now it's judgment time. Awesome effort, teams. You all finished the Bailey's Playhouse Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 We do have a special guest judge who knows a thing or two about playhouses and also about building. He is the site foreman's son, Joseph Wolfcamp. And we like to call him the Wolf Cup. Now, Joseph, we're going to go have a look at these playhouses and you're going to choose us a winner, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go. Let's start with the alien spacecraft. What do you think of the ramp? Ah, uh, very bumpy. <laughs> Is that a perfectly round hole? <laughs> Pretty close. It's not quite like the picture. We'll work with what we got. At least ours is the same colour as the picture. It's your time to be king of the castle. You can put the drawbridge down. And you go. Does it feel like it's been built solidly? Yes. Yeah? It looks like a castle, so we, we definitely hit that. But whether it's creative enough or, or colourful enough, I'm not sure. Let's go check out the gingerbread house. It's looking pretty sweet. You head in. <laughs> the door came off. The door did come off. Ah. Uh, I thought that hot glue would be a, a good way to attach the door temporarily. Is she pretty solid? Yeah, <laughs> just not the door. <laughs> not the door. We, we haven't strayed too much from the original plan. All right, let's check out our colourful cubby house. Mm. You go in, check out the door. It's working! It's working. Oh, oh. What's inside? I think I'm working. 
Yes, well, we're quite strategic with our colour. We're not just slapping it on willy-nilly. We just want to do the best we can. Teams, the wolf cub has a winner. We really, really need that 10 grand with the plumbing. With the windows, it's a massive chunk out of our budget. Yeah, we need this. They were all really good. But my winner is the colourful house. The colourful house. $10,000 towards plumbing is just massive. It's going to be, it's going to help us out a lot. So, yeah, we really needed that. We're happy. <laughs> Congratulations, Kat and Jeremy. You are taking home that 10 grand package of plumbing labour costs from the good people at Laser Plumbing. Thank you. Yeah, well yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Joseph, I think your dad's got a little bit of work to do on these cubbies just to make them safe before the team at Bailey's auction them off. I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> now it is a school night and it's past your bedtime, so it's time to get back to the block. Nice. High five. Now it This is More FM with Simon Gary. I'm a bit of a do-it-yourself guy, aren't I? You've not been on the block. I mean, you've won Dancing with the Stars. Is that not enough for you? <laughs> With less than four days remaining in Kids' Bedroom Week, it's only the teams in Houses 3 and 4 who face pre-line inspections, which they'll have to pass today if they want to catch up. Kat and Jeremy are kicking their day off optimistically. Today we are focusing on our pre-line inspection, making sure our insulation is up so we can pass that and move on and get the jib up. We can start plastering, that would be even better. Yeah, we want to um, get the ceiling framed out and then insulate in behind that as well. Um, and then if, hopefully at the end of the day I can start putting my first coats down. Passing the pre-line is also the number one priority for Brooke and Mitch. But you can't do that if your room doesn't have all its walls. I just had to move that wall in the bathroom, I think, and that's what's okay. cost a bit more timber. Hey, Sam, so I think we'll be okay to line it all tonight, though. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Villas 3 and 4 seem even further behind when compared to House 1, where Jamie and Hayden's super fun kids room is rocketing along. Kids room for us is pretty exciting just because we know that that's where we can be the most creative um, and that's going to be our best shot at winning this. You know, Marty won last year with Marie and James in the kids' bedroom. Because we've got him, it's going to be so much help for us to push these rooms a bit further than what we think we can. But their creative vision is all a bit blurry to the wolf. I'm trying to figure out what it is that they're doing. I'm guessing that it's some sort of day bed. My thoughts are more heading towards all of the building regs around handrails and falling from heights and so on. So if you were to build a deck outside and it was more than a metre off the ground, you'd need a full restraint. Uh, kids beds, hmm. So I want to go and talk to council first. Um, if it doesn't pass muster, then I'm afraid they might just have to pull the whole thing down. Pressure to impress this week is weighing heaviest on Sarah and Manan, who are hoping for room redemption by creating a clever plan. Yeah, it's a completely fresh start this week. New house, new rooms. We're feeling positive. Our strategy now is to plan. Plan, 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 plan. put stuff on paper. Plan, plan, plan. But first, you have to agree on the plan. Now, are we going to buy or make the deals? Well, I thought we said that we'd make it. It's just that if we make it, it's going to take a lot of time for the builders. Well, you were happy for it last night, but we can buy it. No, no, it's not that I was happy for it last night, Manan, but then when you sleep on it, other things come up, like cost. So are you happy for it to be white? Yeah, I thought we've already decided on this stuff. Manan, can you just stop being so condescending and just tell me? OK, yeah. we've gone in the room and kind of been like wishy-washy, wishy-washy, but like... No, we sat down and planned it with photos and everything. Out. Yeah, but Manan, it's like you talk about these things, but then I don't know which ideas are like overridden by other ideas. A lack of vision was Sarah and Manan's biggest problem last week. They need to sort it out. 
Down the other end of the block, our teams in Houses 3 and 4 would desperately like to be at the point where they could be debating design. But none of that is going to happen until they pass their council pre-line inspection. Obviously, uh, a bit of work still to do there. Yeah. <laughs> Had the heater going on, so hopefully it's um, dry. Uh, dry enough. Twenty point four. So you need eighteen. Yeah, right. oh. it's dropping, but we need to get some more heat on there. It's down from this morning, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, till we pass, we can't jib, we can't plaster, we can't paint, and there's only a few days left. So if I come back tomorrow morning, we'll check your moisture again. Yeah. It's all good. Then so you can, you start. can stick all your insulation and everything. Oh, so you will have to leave it out the whole night. Run the risk. Put it all in, and then we'll check your moisture. And if it's too high, you're taking it out. Brooke and Mitch are at the risk-taking point. Whereas next door, Jeremy has already taken them, with all his exterior walls lined and insulated. Mike, hey, How's Jeremy, it going? Craig, Craig, nice to meet you. All right, yeah, in for a uh, roller coaster ride. Yeah, pretty much. Eh, prepared for it. Good. Are you optimistic? Obviously, you're optimistic because you've gone and put the insulation in. We've had the heater on it as well, so try okay. it out for oh, well, three let's hours. Just and see where we're at. Now, Mr. Wolfgang's a bit of a specialist at this. So, what's your guess on moisture levels? Yeah, I'll go with 18. Okay. No, no, I'll stand back. Well, you're 16.8, mate. Ooh. So, you're good. Sweet. So, we'll check it over there. Cool, man, yeah. Maybe Kat and Jeremy's early insulation right. move has paid off. Uh oh. 23.7. Damn. I had the fan in there for about three hours this morning. Tonight, I'm going to have to take all the insulation out, um, fill the hole, which he suggested. There's probably a bit of moisture coming up because a bit of water under the house from all this bad weather. And pretty much pump the fan up there and give it a good drying. So we won't be putting jib up until tomorrow? No. If it's not dry tomorrow morning, it just means that we won't be getting an inspection until the afternoon. We've got the jib stoppers coming at 2 o'clock. So it just means that they'll be offset and it'll just be a chain effect and it'll just, you know, we don't need that right now. With the other teams being so far ahead in their builds, we feel like taking out Kids Week is going to be a near impossible task. Tomorrow at 7.30, it's a block of two halves. We could have picked a house with two rooms already done in it and we wouldn't be sitting in this position right now. As Brooke and Mitch and Kat and Jeremy struggle to catch up. Faster, faster. While the other two teams forge ahead and engage in a battle of the bunks. This takes up kind of half the room. That's because their room's half the size of ours. And all the contestants face off in a challenge that's just downright dirty. 